everybody welcome back to the studio so in your time it's only been a week or less since you've seen me but in my time it's been over a month since I've actually painted anything in my art studio I've been doing some crafts for my daughter's wedding so you'll see those on my channel if you're interested in wedding crafts party crafts whatever click on to those if not then just pass those by and move on to the things that you love so you'll find things like jewelry making and painting and all kinds of things on my channel so find the things that you love I know one of my most popular videos is faux stained glass so if you get a chance check that out it's one of my um, actually it's this one right here it's one of my most popular videos so check it out if you get a chance but um, today I'm going to try out a cup that my son made me on a 3d printer it is an 8 ounce tall cup I wanted a tall cup to do a double pour. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but it's got two sides. So we're going to try that one today. So, right, I'm so as usual, I have prepared the back of my canvas, push pins, and I like to put tape on it. I don't know if you can see this because it's beige tape, but I like to tape all the way around, make sure it's down tight. That way, any drips from the paint I can just peel right off and most of it will be covered. Sometimes our tape doesn't stick so well, but we will see how that goes. So I also leave it on until I decide if I'm going to coat the front with something like resin, because then if there's drips uh, from the resin, then I can also peel that right back off with the resin there and I won't have to sand as much on the back. I also, I like to spray the back of my painting with water and I just give it a light dusting. I've already done that and what it does is it acts to tighten up the cotton of your canvas when it is drying. So you don't want to put anything heavy on it while it's drying. And then when it is dry, so it should be dry by now, I always take a level and make sure that my canvas is level if not, then what I do is I'll adjust my push pins and make sure that I have a level canvas. Sometimes it's the table, sometimes it's the push pins, but if you can adjust it according to the level with your push pins, you should be good. That's good. All right. So let's get our paints mixed up and we'll get ready. All right, so we're going to only use three colors today. So a garnet, a dark, really dark gold, and white for my background. I was thinking about using black for my background, but I can do that on another one if I'm not sure how I, if I like how this one turns out. And I'm only going to put all red in one side, or all garnet in one side, all gold in the other. I just want to see how it pours out. Um, this one has no markers on it. It's four ounces and four ounces. So we should... All right, so my background mixture is kind of runny. I'm going to just leave it as a puddle in the middle and pour into that. And this should be plenty of paint. So eight ounces. This is a 20 by 20 canvas. And I have at least hmm, an ounce and a half, two ounces of just white right there. So our paints have been mixed up fresh and really quick. So let me go ahead and get rid of some bubbles from here. Let me go ahead and load up my cup. So like I said, I'm going to put, see those bubbles in there? We will, we will be dealing with those in just a minute. So I'm actually going to load this almost all the way to the top. Like I said, I don't need the, the full four ounces on each side. So I'm probably putting about three ounces in each side. 
just want to see how this pours out. Looks like our red's coming first. It is a little runnier, so we will see how that comes out. All right, so let me bring back part of this. All right, my red was runnier than I thought it was, which will lead to problems when you're trying to pour out because it will make its way all over the canvas and the gold will just be trying to catch up with the thicker paint. All right, so it's thin enough that our craft paint's going to come up through too. I'm going to try this again without the garnet, with freshly mixed up paint. But ha, interesting so far. All right, I'm going to do a wrecked ring or a wrecked pour and bring in some of the white on this because it is so deep in white. A lot of times I think of red as oriental. Oh, look at that one little blob. I'm not sure I like that. See it right there? All right, let's come straight through this way. I'm going to try to move this one around. Let me All bring right, it so to You top. can see where my runny red kind of kept on coming. It was very watery. So let's go ahead and move this this way. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to move it this way first. Because I do want to keep some of the red, but I want it to be stretched. All right, there we go. Because it fell over the side already, I'm just going to use that to my advantage. get some of this red striping down that way. And I do want to get rid of some of that chunk of gold. Such a lot of paint. All right, and now I'm moving this direction. It's interesting to see some of that white still in there. There we go. Now, there's still a lot of paint on here, so I'm going to go ahead and bring some of this back down, but I'm gonna walk it down. Cause 
I'm going to try to keep this stripe on this side. There it is. Let that go over a little bit. I don't want to overstretch it, which I kind of did up at the top a little bit. You see where it's fading. All right, so let's let that settle for a minute and then I'm going to torch it again. We'll see how that turns out. All right, so let's look and see how this is turning out. Look at this, where the white is. So I'm going to try this with the red being a little bit thicker the next time. The gold seemed to have been just the right texture, but the red was a little watered down for my taste. So we'll show it to you once it dries. I hope, hope you, you enjoyed, enjoyed this split cup, 8 ounce, 3D printed tall cup pour out. Mm -hmm.